All right, here come the answers to the review sheet. Uh, we have a bunch of inequalities on the first page, so um, here's the first one. You want to multiply everything out and uh, make sure that there's a zero on one side of the inequality sign. So as it stands, this is really no good, so we're going to multiply this out. We to get x squared, uh, what's that, plus uh, 3x minus 2x is plus x uh, minus 6 minus 14 is greater than or equal to 0, and then we combine these, uh, so that'll be what, x squared uh, plus x minus 6 minus 14 is uh, minus 20. Greater than or equal to zero, and then we try to factor it because it's all about the zeros, uh, and it factors into x minus five, x uh, no x plus five rather x minus four, greater than or equal to zero, and so if we were to plot this out, uh, the expression would equal zero at four, at four it would be zero, and at minus five it would be zero, and so. The graph of this is a parabola, and it opens up, so it would go like it would go like this through the zeros. So if we did a sign chart for this, it would be uh, positive over here, negative between, and positive over here. Um, so the answers are: if, if we want greater than or equal to zero, we want uh, the answer would be x is less than or equal to minus five, uh, or x is greater than or equal to four. Number two, we pretty much we do the same thing. Uh, pull everything over over to one side. So we'll have x squared uh, plus x plus two is less than or equal to zero. Uh, you would try to factor because it's all about the zeros, but it doesn't look like it factors. So we'd have to do a little side work. Um, use the quadratic formula to see if it ever is zero. So let me just do that up here. You'll get negative 1 plus negative the square root of b squared, so that's 1 minus 4 a c and you can see right away that this is going to give me a, a negative underneath the radical which means that the, uh, this expression is never equal to 0, it doesn't have any zeros alright so if I were to graph it if I were to graph it it would look something like uh, it would either be totally above the x-axis or totally below the x-axis. Um, but since it opens up, well, I know it has to be this one, it doesn't have any zeros, and if it opens up, it has to be completely above, so therefore, no matter what I plug in to here, since it's always above the x-axis, it's uh, this is always going to be some positive number, no matter what I make x. So, uh, no matter what x is, this thing is always positive, so it's never less than or equal to zero, so I would write uh, the empty set or no solution. Uh, the rational one, uh, this is all, this is kind of pre-set up for us here. What you got to do is uh, draw out your number line and just mark down, mark down any values of x that make it equal to zero or that make it undefined. So this thing is 0 at 0, right? If I make x uh, 0, I get 0 out. And if I were to try to make x equal to 4, I would get undefined, right? That would cause d d division by 0, so that's n nothing there. And then you just have to pick test points about these uh, three regions here and see if the result is positive or negative. So if I plug in a number that's greater than 4, I see that that makes the numerator positive and the denominator positive. So positive over positive is positive, so we get positive in here. If I pick a number in between 0 and 4, uh, the numerator is positive, but the denominator will be negative. So uh, positive over negative is negative. And if I pick a number less than 0, that makes both numerator and denominator negative. But saying when you divide them, you will get positive. Uh, so the answer to the inequality we want greater than zero would be uh, x is less than zero or uh, x is greater than four. All right, All right got another one. Um, once again, pull everything over to one side. So we got 4x squared minus x squared. That would be 3x squared uh, minus 2x is less than uh, zero. Now, this is good news because we only have two terms. So once you only have two terms, you, you factor it, and you, we can take out an x, 3x minus 2, less than 0, 
and then you do the same thing that we did in the first problem. Kind of mark out this uh, number line here, and mark out the numbers that make this expression equal to zero. It's all about the, the zeros. So at zero, the expression is zero, and if I set this term equal to zero, I get uh, two thirds, right? Uh, yeah, two thirds. And at two thirds, it's zero. So if I plug in a number that's greater than two, uh, so, so what? Well, it makes a. Uh, we know that it's it's a parabola, and it's going to open up, so the graph is going to look like this. So we know right from the outset that the signs are going to be positive, negative, positive. But if we were to test them out, plug in a number greater than two thirds, that'll be, make this positive. This will also be positive, so that'll be positive. If we plug in a number between zero and two thirds, this is positive. That'll make, but this one will be negative if we, we plug in a small number like one tenth or so for a combination of negative. And if you plug in a negative value for x, that makes both of these negative, and so their product will be positive. So we're looking for the values of x that make the expression less than zero. So the answer would be x is between uh, zero and two thirds. Next one, All right, just like the third one. Uh, same deal, you want to plot numbers that make it zero or undefined. So uh, it's going to be, we could factor a three out of the top here, right? x plus one. And it'll be zero if x is, if, if x is negative one, the value of the expression will be zero. And if x is zero, uh, the function will be, un the expression will be undefined because you'll have division by zero. So just plug in three test numbers. Uh, if we plug in a positive number, top is positive, bottom is positive, so everything is positive. If we plug in a number between zero and negative one, say minus one half or so, uh, the denominator will be negative, but the numerator will be positive, so that'll be a uh, combination of negative. And if we plug in a number less than minus one, both top and bottom will be um, negative, and when you divide them, we'll get positive again. Uh, so this is how the chart goes, and we're looking for values of x that make the thing positive. So we want these ones and these ones. So that would be x is great. Uh, oh, x, we want x is less than um, minus one, or x is greater than zero. All right. And last one over here. Multiply all this out. Clean this up. We'll have x squared plus two x uh, is less than two x squared. Uh, plus 2x, and you see that the two x's will cancel on both sides. And then I'm going to bring this over to the other side, and that'll give us 0 over here is less than x squared. So this is asking what values of x uh, make this expression greater than 0. And if you just kind of look at it, it's asking you what numbers are there such that when you square them, uh, the result is going to be greater than zero. And just from thinking about it, you can see that it's going to be greater than zero if x is negative or if x is positive. If x is, the only exception is if x is equal to zero, right? Because if x is equal to zero, uh, then you get e equality and uh, the, the thing will be e equal to zero and uh, that's not a solution. So, uh, well, so what you would say is, uh, here's zero, right? If x is zero, the whole thing is zero. If x is positive, the expression is positive, and if x is negative, the expression is also positive. So uh, the solution to this would be, uh, you could just write x does not equal zero, or uh, you could write x is greater than zero, or x is less than zero. Right? Everything but zero counts as a solution to this. Anything that, that you plug in is going to give you uh, a, a positive number out. Uh, the, the second page of this, we have, uh, what do we have? All right, uh, intersections and unions. Okay, so A is, I might want to write this down. A is uh, all the numbers between 0 and 10, inclusive. B is the even integers, so uh, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on and so on. And C, so C is the odd integers. So this is a test of understanding what the intersection and union symbols mean. So A intersect B is everything that's in A, everything, every element that is in both A and B. Um, so since A has all the numbers between 0 and 10, and B only has the even integers, so B is the more 
restrictive set. Uh, the only numbers that are in both of those sets are the even integers between 0 and 10. So that would be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. That's in the intersection. Uh, a union B is everything that's either in A or in B. So um, that's everything that's in A, so that, that would be all, A union B is everything uh, all numbers between 0 and 10 uh, and all even integers. Right? Because any one of these numbers, anything in, in these is either in this or in this. So that's that. Uh, A union with C. So uh, that's kind of similar to this last one here. Uh, this is everything that's in A or everything that's in C. So this would be all numbers between uh, 0 and 10 and uh, all odd integers. All right, so it's every single number between 0 and 10 in addition to numbers like um, 11 and 13, 15 and so on and so on. A intersect C is similar to the first one. It's, it's everything that's both in this uh, and in this at the same time. So uh, the only numbers that are in both A and C are the odd integers between 0 and 10. So that would be 1, uh, 3, 5, 7, and 9. B intersects C. <clears throat> um, since B is the set of the even integers and C is the set of the odd integers, they don't have any elements in common. So the, uh, their intersection is nothing. They don't have any overlap. And B union C is anything that's an even integer or anything that is an odd integer. So this would be all all integers. Right? Anything that's in that. Alright, find two sets A and B whose intersection is every is all numbers between minus zero minus zero. Uh, between 0 and 5. I don't know what that is doing there, but uh, let's just assume it's everything between 0 and 5, including 5 but not 0. So two sets whose intersection is that. You could say uh, you, uh, all that we need is two sets such that, where they over, such that they overlap. This is where they overlap. So, for example, you could say uh, A would be the set uh, 0 to infinity, right? That would be everything. Let me write that down on the, a number line. That would be everything from 0 to forever. And you could say B would be everything that is um, from minus infinity up to and including 5. That is everything from 5 back. So if we take all these and all these, their intersection will just be the spots where they overlap and let me draw that so here's right, if here's A here's 0 that's all this and B here's 5 that's this and all this they intersect only the uh, numbers that are in both of them are the intersection so these two sets will qualify as answers anything that you know uh, the answer is not uh, unique you could also say that, uh, just to give another example, you could say A is uh, from 0 to 5, and B is minus infinity to infinity. Right? If we intersect these t t two sets, the region where they overlap is just going to be this set itself. So there are many such answers, but uh, these are just two. Next one says, find two sets A and B whose union is the numbers between 0 and 10, but whose intersection is the empty set. So whose intersection is the empty set. So we want two sets um, such that when you union them we get all the numbers between 0 and 10 but they don't have anything in common. Uh, it's pretty easy. All that you could uh, you could just you just have to take this and split it up somehow. So we could say A equals uh, everything from 0 to say 5 uh, inclusive and B would be everything from 5 to 10. Right, this will work because if you because they they don't intersect anywhere and their union is everything between zero and ten. So anything that's uh, that works out like this, right? I could. All right, my camera uh, ran out of juice there for a second, but I was on 
number seven, and uh, these are the answers that I came up with. We have I have two different sets here. Uh, if you union these two sets, you get everything from zero to ten, uh, but their intersection is nothing. Similarly here, uh, from zero to nine point nine nine. Uh, or say all numbers from 9.99 to 10. If you I intersect these, you get everything between 0 and 10. But they're, uh, I'm sorry, if you union them, you, you get everything between 0 and 10, including 10 but not 0. But their, uh, you, their intersection is nothing. So anything that uh, satisfies those uh, criteria are good. Uh, the last one is. All right, I got this graph here, and I'm just gonna read. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna keep this up, and just read the questions. It says, uh, use the graph to solve the following. Uh, it says, solve g of x equals four. So uh, you look at the graph, and you try to see where is g of x equal to four, and you see nowhere is g of x four. Right, the highest it goes is three. So the answer to that first one is um, no solution. All right, the, the, the next one says uh, solve the equation g of x equals 1 and g of x equals 1 here and here. So the solutions to that, the x values that make g equal to 1 would be 2 and negative 1. So I write those down, right? So g of 2 is 1 and g of minus 1 is 1. So that's it. Uh, solve g of x is less than or equal to 0. So we're looking for where g of x is negative, so that would be everything back here. All right, these numbers are where g is less than zero, and also these. So the solution to that one would be um, x is less than minus two, or x is greater than, uh, looks like two and a half. So what is that, uh, x is less than minus two, uh, or x is greater than or equal to 2.5. And finally, so solve where g of x is between one and two inclusive. Uh, so where is so here's right here's one and here's two. So g of x is between one and two for let's see, well, one. No, no, no. I'm sorry. That's here and here. So this region and this region here. We want the x values that lead to those. So um, the values of x that make g between one and two are x is between minus 1 and 0, right, these, uh, or x is between, it looks like, 1 and a half and 2, right, these values of x make the graph in this range here, and these values of x make the graph uh, within that range there, and, um, all right, that's it, that's the review sheet.